Hello everyone, welcome to a new video in your Lead Green Associate version for exam preparation course. In this video, we will talk about Lead GA exam overview. In the next video, we will talk about Lead GA exam registration. And in the final video in this lecture series, we will talk about Lead GA 10 final tips before the exam. Lead GA exam overview, chapter 12, lecture 1. Exam development. All lead exams are developed by a global network of subject matter experts and meet the specifications of a job analysis. The exam specifications are subject to rigorous validation by these experts, which ensures that the exam is valid, measuring what is intended to measure. Once the exams are launched, the exam questions are regularly monitored to ensure continued reliability. The three main items that the candidate should be focusing on in the exam are recall, application, and analysis. So the recall questions. These questions assess a candidate's ability to recall factual material that is presented in a similar context to the exam references. It's like memorizing some information. Application questions. These questions provide the candidate with a novel problem or scenario that the candidate can solve using familiar principles or procedures described in the exam references. And then we have analysis questions. These questions assess a candidate's ability to break the problem down into, into components to create a solution. The candidate must not only recognize the different elements of the problem, but must also evaluate the relationship or interactions of these elements. These are the three hierarchical cognitive levels that the exam questions are based on. The exam is 100 randomly delivered multiple choice questions and must be completed in 10 hours. The exam also have scored and unscored questions. All questions are delivered randomly throughout the exam and candidates are not informed of a question's status. So candidates should respond to all questions on the exam. Unscored questions are used to gather information and performance data to inform whether the question should be scored on future exams. The whole exam is a computer-based exam. Questions and answer options are displayed on screen. The computer records your responses and times your exam. You'll be able to change your answer, skip questions, and flag questions for later review. Exam specifications, and this part is really important just for your uh, information and how to prepare for the exam. For each category, there are certain number of questions. For We will start with lead process. So you can expect a question that contains this information. So you should be able to understand all these topics. And if you are not understanding any of these topics, you have to go back to the lecture and recheck it again. So lead process are 16 questions out of 85 questions in the final exam. Organization fundamentals, structure of lead rating system, scope of each lead rating system, lead development process, credit categories, impact categories, lead certification process, and other rating systems. And then we have integrative strategies, eight questions. Integrative process, integrative project team members, standards that support lead, and then location and transportation, seven questions. Site selection, alternative transportation, and then we have sustainable sites, site assessment, site design and development. Then we have water efficiency with nine questions. Outdoor water use, indoor water use, and water performance management. Then energy and atmosphere, 10 questions. It contains building loads, energy efficiency, alternative and renewable energy practices, energy performance management, and environmental concerns. Materials and resources, nine questions. Reuse, life cycle impacts, waste, purchasing and declarations, 
And then we have indoor environmental quality, eight questions. Indoor air quality, lighting, sound, acoustics, occupant comfort, health, and satisfaction. Last part is project surroundings and public outreach. And you can find this in each of the conclusion video that we have. For each chapter, there is a conclusion video. In the conclusion video, you will find some standards and it's related to this category the project surroundings and public outreach so it includes environmental impacts of the built environment codes and standards values of sustainable design and regional design also there is a specific chapter for regional priority and this is a previous chapter also it relates to this category and then we have the 15 unscored questions that you don't know which question is scored and which question is not scored. You have just to answer all the question in your exam. The primary language for the exam is English. In case of any discrepancies between the original English content and the translated content or challenges made to the exams, the English content will be used as a basis of the consideration. Translation is offered and for your information when you look into the website and you will try to register for the exam You will find Language it's not written translated language. It's just written language So you have to select your native language because the exam will come in English language anyway But you have to check and select the other language uh, And it's not clear on the website. You might be confused when you select it because it's not written as a translated language, it's just written language. So you just have to select your native language. Uh, it's offered as, a, as an aid to non-native English speakers and is provided in Arabic, Brazilian, Portuguese, Chinese, French, German, Japanese, Korean and Spanish. The use of translators or foreign language dictionaries during the examination will not be permitted. Additional time to complete the exam will not be provided. The translated exam will be presented with the English text on top and the translated text below. For your references for the exam, these are the official documents that the lead exam might come from. It's a bit comprehensive, but I will just review it with you. So the first reference that, that is listed here is Lead Core Concepts Guide. And you can only rely on the reading part included in each chapter. You will find in each chapter a reading part. This will be enough along with the videos and taking the simulation exams. But here they are adding many documents just to cover the whole subject. And they can bring the, the, um, the questions from any of these documents. So Lead Core Concepts Guide is a really simple book and you won't need it for now. And then lead building design and construction reference guide introduction. So the introduction is downloaded separately from uh, the website and I've also added these sections into our course so you can find it easily in the references. And then the US Green Building Council lead version for impact category and point allocation process overview. I have added this document into chapter two which is how we are considering the credits, how we allocate the points, and we already described this one in detail. And then we have lead version for user guide. It's a simple introductory uh, document. Uh, you will find it also in the references in the first or second chapter. And then we have guide to lead certification, commercial. It's also included under lead certification lecture in chapter two. Lead certification fees, you should always check the lead certification fees from the website. The issue is, lead certification fees change from time to time, so you cannot rely on any course. It might change any time. So you have to check the website to make sure that the lead certification fees are the latest. And then we have rating system selection guide. And also we have described this in detail in our lectures. And lastly, we have Addenda Database. It's a huge, huge list of websites. When you enter the Addenda Database, it's like the whole database of the USGBC website. You cannot study it. You cannot just search on it. It contains everything. 
so they are just adding this statement or adding this reference because this means they might bring anything from anywhere but i'm just assuring you that if you studied this video course also make your tasks read all the references and the reading part and then took simulation exams you will pass your exam from the first time the exam results all the professional exams are scored between 125 and 200 a score of 170 or higher is required to pass your exam score will be displayed on screen at the end of the exam and the score report will be emailed to you following your exam session Within 72 hours of your appointment, your exam results will be processed, your credentials account will be updated, and if applicable, your badge will be updated in the USGBC website people directory. Passing the exam, designating your credential as soon as you have passed the Lead Green Associate exam. You can use the title Lead Green Associate and or the logo. Lead GA is not an approved abbreviation for the Lead Green Associate credential. And you should not use it at any circumstances because they didn't add it to their copyrights. It's not copyrighted. It is just an abbreviation and anyone can use it. But they have a registered trademark for the lead green associate statement. It's already a registered trademark. Exam results. All lead professionals are required to maintain their credential by earning continuing education hours. Lead Green Associates must earn 15 continuing education hours within two years of earning their credential. Lead APs must earn 30 continuing education hours within two years of earning their credential. You can earn hours through activities that are related to education project experience, authorship, and volunteering. We have come to an end of our lecture. In the next lecture, we will talk about Lead Green Associate Exam Registration, how to register for your exam step-by-step step through the website. It's easy process. Thank you for listening and see you in the next video.